If you have a preschooler, chances are they have expressed some concern about being afraid of the dark. And if they haven't yet, they will at some point. Today, I want to help you understand when children are old enough to actually be scared of the dark, where that fear comes from, and how you can set them up to easily move past the idea or the actual fear of the dark. But before I dive in, I want to remind everyone that this show is for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace the guidance of a qualified professional. And I have a quick favor to ask. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts and you've been enjoying How Long Till Bedtime, it'd mean the world to me if you'd scroll down on the Apple episode library and leave us a review. This is going to help us reach more parents. Thanks so much. Hi, I'm Allison Edgety, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. Having fears or worries about the dark is something that virtually all young children will experience at some point. Setting your child up to confidently move past their concerns and being prepared yourself to confidently guide them through this phase can be the difference between the struggle requiring a couple conversations or it taking weeks, months, or even years for your child to overcome this fear. So to start, I think it's important for parents to understand that babies are not afraid of the dark. A fear of the dark is a seed that is planted. So often I will work with parents who have infants and they're keeping a nightlight in their room because they are worried that their infant may be scared of the dark. So I just want to make sure that we all understand that our little infants are not scared of the dark. So typically the seed is planted when children are older than two and a half years old. And it's planted by something that a child hears in a book or sees in a show or a movie, or because another child will tell them that they're scared of the dark. So for example, with my oldest, Addison, the seed was planted at preschool. A child told the class that they were scared of the dark. And then with best intentions and an effort to help the child, the teacher actually read a book to the entire class about a child who was scared of the dark. This was a double whammy. And I'm guessing every child walked away like mine and went home to talk to their parents about being afraid of the dark. First piece of advice I want to share, don't ever read a book to your preschooler that includes any idea of being scared of the dark even if the end result is realizing that the dark isn't something to worry about. Just by reading that book or exposing them to that movie or the show, that is going to plant the seed. So you want to do your best to try to protect them from this seed being planted as long as possible. Inevitably, it's going to come up, but we want to try to avoid it for as long as we can. So before I address what to do when the seed is planted, I want to rewind to the infant days and what you can do to prepare for this inevitable bump in the road. Truly, the first and most important thing you can do to set your child up for success is to have them sleeping in the dark. There are many benefits to sleeping in the dark as far as the quality of your sleep, etc. But one of the benefits is that your child will be accustomed to sleeping in the dark when that fear seed gets planted. That means no nightlights in our infant's rooms or in our toddler rooms. You really want the room to be as dark as you can get it. So let me play out two scenarios for you. In the first, your child has always had some sort of nightlight in their room. And then sweet little Susie at school tells your son about how she's scared of the dark. Guess what validates that entire idea? the fact that your son has a nightlight in his room. He might find himself thinking, oh my gosh, that's why I have a nightlight in my room. It's because the dark is scary. The next thing you know, he wants the closet light on, the hall light on, maybe even his overhead light on. He thinks he needs these lights to be safe and to sleep because the dark is scary. 
On the other hand, if little Susie tells your son that she's scared of the dark, but he's always slept in the dark, he's probably going to come home and announce to you that he's now scared of the dark. And then you're going to ask why or where he got this idea. And he'll tell you that his friend, little Susie, told him about how she's scared of the dark and he realized he's scared of the dark too. But then you can say, oh my gosh, that is such a bummer that Susie is scared of the dark because we love the dark in this house. You get so much awesome sleep because you sleep in a dark room. Daddy and I love the dark so much. Every time we go in our room and turn off the lights and get into bed, oh my gosh, we are so happy because the room is so dark and we know our body is going to get some awesome sleep. The dark is awesome. We love the dark. Gosh, I really hope that Susie can learn to love the dark soon too. Now, if your son has always slept in the dark, it's much easier for him to buy into this response. He really has no reason to to not believe you or to think otherwise because when he thinks about it, he always has slept in the dark and it's really never been a problem. And if you keep talking about your love of the dark, he's going to pick up on that because for better or for worse, our kids pick up on so much of how we feel and the way we say things. And so it's really important that you continue to talk about the dark in a positive way. So what should you do here? If you have a child that's under the age of two or two and a half years old, and they currently have a nightlight, or you have a child that's even older than that, and they have a nightlight, but they don't have any concerns of the dark, I strongly encourage you to remove any nightlights from their room ASAP. Get them accustomed to sleeping in the dark. If you have a child who's two and a half years or older, and they already have a fear of the dark, consider switching their light to a reddish or amber color light. The red and amber colors are less likely to disrupt their sleep, and it kind of opens the door for us to have a conversation about why we have the light in the room. So I wouldn't actually refer to this new light as a nightlight. I would just refer to it as a sleep light. You'll want to get a light that will tell them when it's time to wake up. So for example, I like the hatch. I'll link to the one I like in the show notes. And that would allow the light to be a reddish color when it's time to sleep and then to turn green when it's time to wake up. So you'll set that light to be red at the very dimmest setting and you'll put it across the room so that it's not shining in your child's face because even a reddish or amber color light does have the potential to disrupt sleep, but it's least likely to. And then to make the switch, you'll say something like, hey, I learned something new today. I learned that the nightlight in your room can make it very hard for your body to sleep. I didn't know that. But now that I do know that, I'm going to take the nightlight out. But the good news is that I also learned that this new red light I bought you won't make it hard for your body to sleep. And this is a special sleep light. So I'm going to put this new sleep light in your room. It's going to be red when it's time to sleep, and it's going to turn green when it's time to wake up. So it really helps you know when it's time to sleep. So That allows your child to understand why we have this light in here. It has a specific purpose, and the purpose is for your child to know when they should be sleeping and when they should get up. It has nothing to do with being a nightlight or related to being afraid of the dark. So telling your child about the change is important. Don't just switch anything out for kids over the age of two, two and a half, they're not going to like surprises. So telling them that the change is happening and telling them the truth about why the change needs to happen is also really important because it is true. A nightlight is not good for their sleep. And if you didn't know that, it's like no better, do better. So you're going to tell them you didn't know that. But now that you do, you're going to make a change. So preparing your child for this change and telling them why you're doing it is really key to having a smoother transition. So to recap, keep nightlights out of your infant and toddler's bedroom. Get them accustomed to sleeping in a really dark room. Don't introduce a nightlight if you don't already have one. So if you want to introduce a sleep light, but you have a child who's used to sleeping in the dark, 
just use a light like the hatch to turn green when it's time to wake up. You don't even need to have it be red. That's just a transitional piece if we have to move away from a night light and we think there's going to be an issue. And if you do have a night light and your child already has a fear of the dark, switch to a very dim reddish or amber light and explain the switch to your child. And also start to talk about how great the dark is and how much you like the dark. So we don't need to tell them that they need to like the dark, but keep a really positive language and dialogue going around how you like the dark. All right. I hope this episode helps you feel more prepared to navigate your child's inevitable fear of the dark. And before we wrap up today, I want to let you know that I'm going to be leading a preschool sleep group coaching program in January of 2022. So if you have a child who's between the ages of three and five years old, who is struggling with bedtime, night wakings, anxiety around sleep or nap struggles, this is a chance for us to work together to get your child confidently sleeping more independently. I will be leading a two hour live workshop, and then I will offer five follow-up Zoom check-in calls for the parents who are in the group. So if this is of interest to you, you can learn more at allisonedgedy.com forward slash preschool dash sleep dash program. And of course, I will link to this in the show notes so you can get to it easily. I hope you'll join me back here next week. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to How Long Till Bedtime. To learn how we can work together to improve your child's sleep, please visit sleepandwellnesscoach.com.